Uh, so my name is Ashish Agarwal, and I recently graduated from Boston University. And uh, the title of my talk is Role of uh, Directional Wireless Communication in Vehicular Networks. And we have a, a poster in this conference uh, related to this work. Uh, here, I'm just going to pre present uh, the motivation behind this work. I'm not going to present uh, many results. But uh, I hope to spur some discussion and provide a, a new perspective to this problem. So uh, if you look at uh, the state of the art uh, in terms of autonomous vehicles, uh, we have the DARPA Grand Challenge, which is uh, trying to have autonomous vehicles on the road. So some manufacturers have even claimed that they will have autonomous vehicles on the road by 2028. And the approach right now is, uh, this is an example of the, the vehicle that won the competition. And uh, here you can see the car equipped with cameras and all kinds of sensors. Inside the car, you have uh, actuators, or this is a robotic arm that is actually controlling the gearing or the gear lever inside. And in the back, you see all the equipment that goes into managing this uh, autonomous vehicle. So uh, the idea is to develop situational awareness. Uh, and this right now is being done through the use of sophisticated sensors. Uh, and uh, these include LIDAR, IR, thermal, ultrasound. And uh, right now, uh, they can even do video. So <clears throat> uh, applications like uh, lane uh, detection, et cetera, are uh, implementable right now. And in this figure, we illustrate the concept that around a vehicle, there are several sensors, uh, potentially expensive sensors, uh, that uh, envelop this vehicle. And the idea is uh, situational awareness. So all around a vehicle, you are aware of what the vehicle is doing or what kind of environment it is in. So uh, the idea is that when you have these sensors, you can correspondingly build actuators or controllers that can do the steering, braking, and accelerating, and you have an autonomous vehicle. But uh, for us, uh, we uh, provide a contrasting vision for autonomous vehicles. Instead of having increased sensing capability, uh, we propose that why not have increased communication? Instead of having a fully autonomic or autonomous vehicle, Another approach is through cooperative or networked vehicles. Rather than have a vehicle controlled independently, we can have a vehicle that is controlled by the cloud. Uh, to explain this vision, we use the example of uh, a platooning application. So when uh, vehicles are platooned on the highway, uh, as you can see in the image, uh, cars are traveling one behind the other. The goal is that you have communication uh, between these cars for safety. So each car uh, shares its state information uh, through wireless communication, and the car following can get this information and act accordingly. So this is, uh, we call this co uh, cooperation through communication. And uh, the idea is that you can build uh, collision avoidance applications through cooperative communication. And that is uh, the goal of the, uh, developing the DSRC protocols, et cetera, right now. Uh, so our, uh, our vision is that if we can do collision avoidance, why, why cannot we do uh, autonomic, autonomous driving vehicles? So for this, uh, uh, we look at behavioral rules. So be, if you look at behavioral rules, uh, um, autonomous robots or uh, um, swarm behavior is uh, based on the behaviors of fish. So fish, as they swim, uh, <clears throat> if there's an obstacle or if there's a narrow uh, uh, narrow uh, width on the roadway, uh, they can uh, co communicate with each other, cooperate, and form a single line and do that, uh, and negotiate the roadway, or in this case, the ocean. So similarly, vehicles right now, uh, through a human controller, negotiate the roadway. Uh, there's no reason uh, why we cannot do this autonomously as well. So uh, several researchers are looking at swarm, swarms of locusts, bumblebees, etc., uh, and building autonomous uh, robots. So if this can be done for robots, uh, this can be done for vehicles as well. Uh, that's our theory. So uh, here uh, I have an example that illustrates this concept. And uh, again, cooperative, if you want to implement cooperative collision avoidance, each vehicle has a safety bubble around itself. So it's, uh, the idea is building awareness beyond its sensory range. So right now, our awareness is limited to our hearing capabilities or our vision capabilities. 
if you have uh, uh, <clears throat> sophisticated sensors like cameras, lidars, and radars, those have a corresponding sensory range as well. So the idea is that uh, every vehicle has a safety bubble, and uh, it wants to maintain its safety by uh, maintaining the safety bubble. Um, but on the roadway, what we observe is that there are uh, several vehicles on the roadway as well. So these are immediate neighbors, and each of them has its own safety bubble. So through uh, communication, uh, if all the vehicles share their state information, we uh, get into interdependent safety issues. So for example, if one car crashes, then it might affect another vehicle on the roadway. Uh, so right now, uh, if there's a sensor, a sensor actuator system, this is uh, going to be a challenge. So the challenge is, uh, how do you implement this? So you have two contrasting approaches, whether you do an independent decision making or you have a collaborative approach. So in an in a independent decision making model, what happens is, so for example, if a car in front of you is going to crash, you are able to detect that, but then you have to make the decision what to do in this state. So in, an, in the de independent decision making, uh, a car will try, uh, the autonomous vehicle will try to veer itself uh, from the situation. But what if the other vehicle does the same thing? So in a collaborative approach or where we have communication, uh, if the two cars could communicate and negotiate the use of the roadway, we would potentially avoid such a situation. But so both, uh, both situations have these challenges. So in one case, uh, the challenge is how do you sense and react to the situation? And in the other, the challenge is how do you communicate in that situation? In one, uh, you're limited by the computing power. So uh, in terms of the independent decision making, uh, the challenge is uh, to compute the situation. So you have all kinds of sensors and actuators uh, and um, latency constraints in, or in the order of milliseconds. So to compute that in short, such a short space and time is hard. But on the other hand, the challenge is trust. So if you're getting your information from another vehicle or in a vehicle in front, can you really trust that information? So for example, you're driving down the roadway and there's a truck in front of you, but the truck is uh, equipped with fancy equipment such as a camera, and that camera information is shared with you. So you have a vision uh, that is blocked by the truck, but you can see ahead on the roadway. But how do you trust this information? So that's a challenge. <clears throat> so uh, in this work, what we've uh, investigated is that uh, omnidirectional communication is one potential technology that needs, uh, that, uh, needs to be investigated. And that is because we have high density of vehicles on the roadway. And there is contention of the shared medium. If you consider applications uh, for safety criticality, then these applications cannot uh, tolerate high latency or low packet uh, rates. So, uh, but in a situation where you have m uh, many vehicles on the roadway, and uh, suppose there's an accident or there's a critical situation, uh, there's high density of data that is potentially exchanged between vehicles. And this uh, leads to uh, contention of the shared medium and uh, correspondingly decreased uh, quality of service uh, in terms of latency and packet delivery. And uh, <clears throat> these problems are also uh, being experienced right now in the DSRC. But uh, for, for us, for our work, uh, what we are envisioning is that if you have um, safety communication, especially uh, with respect to uh, autonomous vehicles, then the uh, bandwidth of data that is uh, exchanged is potentially very large. So for that, we are proposing a directional communication uh, in um, methodology where uh, the communication is restricted to, to the nearest neighbors. And there's continuous exchange of state information. And this is uh, cr uh, critical to our assumption because if you don't have a continuous exchange, there's, then there's potentially plenty of bandwidth available. But uh, if there is a continuous exchange of data and potentially high bandwidth of data for safety information with all kinds of sensors, et cetera, then this creates a, a contention problem. So we are investigating uh, wireless connectivity technologies and uh, context-aware communication. And uh, for this, uh, uh, I will request you to visit my poster uh, on Wednesday. Thank you. <laughs>